Hey guys, so recently I was just scrolling through Amazon as you normally do and I came across a $25 GoPro knockoff and I was like, I've got to try this thing. Like there's no way it can be good, right? I ordered it, here it is. And we're gonna test this and compare it to an actual $400 GoPro. Let's look at what it claims to have on the listing, shall we? It says that it shoots in full 1080p HD. The display is 140 degree wide angle lens. It can go 96 feet underwater, 12 megapixel pictures, and a 2.0 aperture. So that sounds like this thing should be pretty good. Not as good as a GoPro, but pretty good. So first thing I'm noticing is the actual picture here is terrible quality. I mean, if this was shot on this camera, then I don't even want it. Just in general, like it's generic, like there's no brand name, like nothing. Like the design of this is pretty bad. I could have made a better designed packaging, right? Like this was made in Microsoft Paint. <laughs> Let's open it up and take a look. So here she is. It looks like a GoPro. Like it really does look pretty good. So I have an actual GoPro here to compare it to. This is the GoPro Hero 5. This weighs like a third of what this one weighs. Kind of weird. The screen on this one, I doubt this is touch screen. So here's the footage on the GoPro that I shot with this overhead shot. As you can see, pretty standard GoPro footage. Looks pretty good. And here is the $25 knockoff GoPro. Yeah, it's pretty bad right off the bat. First thing I'm noticing is this is not a wide angle lens at all. And we're in pretty good lighting and it's somehow still grainy. So that's definitely a concern. Now that we have a little first impression of this thing, I'm not impressed. <laughs> Let's take it out and shoot some stuff and see how it does. So I decided to take these GoPros out to Santa Monica and test them out. All right, we're out in the field. You know, the expectations are pretty low, but I'm excited to see what I can do. Starting with the GoPro Hero 5, of course this is gonna be better quality. I mean, we kind of know that at this point the knockoff is not gonna be nearly as good, but this is just to show you kind of standard GoPro footage. This is what it looks like before you color it or anything like that. And here is the sports camera GoPro knockoff. So as we can see, it already looks choppy um, on the screen. It looks terrible. There were only two settings, 15 frames per second and 30 frames per second. And what you're seeing right here, it claims is 1080p, but I just don't believe that at all. It's not 1080p, it's definitely, I mean, look at this, it looks awful. This is the kind of quality you expect from like a flip phone from 2004. It's kind of a look, it's a vintage look, I guess. So we're gonna do a few tests. The first one is just getting a static shot and seeing how it looks side by side. So obviously the real GoPro is on the left, looks really good. And on the right, you can see just how much this camera zooms in. It's kind of crazy that they would call this a wide angle because it's clearly not at all. Here's another angle. As you can see, the wind is kind of blowing. The GoPro handles it like a champ, but the knockoff is super shaky. I'm not surprised by that. And here it is with me in it. It just, I mean, I truly have no words for how terrible this camera is. Even when we zoom in on the GoPro, you can see the GoPro is so much sharper. It's just, it's not even a competition at all. Since we're at the beach, we're gonna take these guys underwater and just test the underwater housing. I'm also curious to see what the footage looks like of this underwater. So the first one we're gonna do is the real GoPro. I just put it under the water. Obviously this shot isn't gonna look super cool, but it's a clear shot. It's exactly what I expected it to look like. Like you can see the texture of the water, little air bubbles. But the action cam is a totally different story. So yeah, let's just put it underwater and just, just watch. There's no texture here at all. It's just like flashing colors. I actually realized that this makes a really cool light leak if you copy and paste it, overlay it on another clip, set the blend mode to screen, and then put the opacity at like 50%. It looks like a nice little light leak actually. So I guess I got something out of this camera. And can I just say, you guys should really thumbs up this video because I went through the effort to go in the water. Okay, our next test, we're heading back up to the pier. Okay, we're gonna take these GoPros on the roller coaster at the Santa Monica Pier to test the stabilization. I really thought what better way to test how stable this shot is gonna be than on a roller coaster. So let's take a look at how it turned out. 
Okay, so this first shot obviously is the GoPro Hero 5. It's a pretty smooth shot because it's such a wide angle. Even though we're on a shaky roller coaster, it looks really smooth. It doesn't look you, like you don't feel sick watching this. And on the $25 one, this is how it looks. It's actually not as shaky as I expected, but like you just can't see a lot. It's as if we took this GoPro shot and zoomed it in like this much. So overall, it's, it's kind of stable, but the GoPro definitely better for this. Another stabilization test is just to shake these cameras and see if they get any kind of rolling shutter or if they look pretty good. So starting with the GoPro, when you shake it, it doesn't look great, but it doesn't look that bad either. With the fake GoPro, it's really just hard to watch. It looks terrible and it definitely has a rolling shutter when we go side to side here. You can see it's like the buildings become wavy. So the actual GoPro does pretty well on this. The fake one, not so much. So all in all, the fake GoPro was terrible. I mean, I knew it wasn't gonna be the quality of an actual GoPro, but I didn't expect it to be this bad. The reviews on Amazon were pretty good. For example, this review claimed that the field of view was better than an iPhone 7 Plus. Let me ask you guys, do you think this is better than an iPhone 7 Plus? because I don't. I think that this is a fake review. To sum it up, just don't buy this camera and maybe also don't trust every Amazon review that you ever read. Hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Comment down below if there's any other cheap camera stuff I should test out and I will see you guys in my next video, bye.